What's up guys, it's Poir and welcome to a build slash strategy that gives you a ton of 5 stars, a ton of graces, super omega piece sets, the best farm in the game, raining 5 stars and graces, no cap, but also cap. <laughs> That's a lie. Uh, the five star drop rate is abysmal in this game, even with maxed out luck build. I don't know what they were smoking at Team Ninja, but in my opinion, it is too grindy to be this early for base game, considering the power gain from a five star grace set is barely 15% more damage than a normal set. So imagine how much grind we're gonna do for DLC when they probably introduce six stars and such. I shudder the thought. But with that said though, this is still the best thing you can do to farm gear, and over time you will get lots of 5 stars and graces, you're just gonna have to grind for it, but you're also gonna get a lot of rare embedded stats after you salvage gear, you're gonna get a lot of money from selling jewel fragments from salvaging said gear, and the farm is super easy and can be done as early as chapter 2 into new game plus. So as you can see in the background, yes, the farm is the monkey, pretty typical, and the side mission tale of gooey goozy, yeah. That's how you pronounce that. But super simple. Spawn in, kill the monkey, get rewards at the end. However, while doing this mission like 20 times, I got zero range gear. So I'll have a fix for that towards the end as well. So make sure to like the video and comment for the algorithm's sake. Now, let's get into the build. To get gear, you need luck. So this is a luck farming build. Everything with luck on it, and the best set for that is the Entertainer set, which you can get the full set in Chapter 4, Fate of the Entertainer. Hopefully you get a 4-star version of it, otherwise 3-star is fine. But the point is, the chest and legs come with a permastat luck of 36, which is around 10 higher than the crafted luck stat. But the helms and arms don't have the luck stats, so you can replace those with whatever. I chose the King's Advisor set for more chi, as when fighting the monkey over and over, by putting chi obtention on everything, you get a lot of XP per run and can fly in levels too. So no need to farm gator or other XP farms, this one actually gives you gear on top, just do this instead. Ideally, you would want to get luck as a natural stat, which can be as high as 30 I think, on the other pieces, but otherwise just craft luck, craft water damage, and ice attack on everything. And for the helm, try to get power gain on wizardry spell, or damage amplification on wizardry spell. And lastly, chi obtention for more XP, and water spell consumption to cast a bit better, although I find it doesn't really matter. For weapon, you want to use Master Smith's Hammer, because it gives equipment drop rate A, which combined with our spirit, you get equipment drop rate A+. Not sure how effective it is, but I tend to get mostly 3-4 to four rewards, so why not? You can buy the hammer outright from the old man from Accolades, but you can also get it just randomly from drops like I did. From testing, it seems weapon damage stats, or at least the red ones, are local, meaning they won't affect your spell damage, so just a heads up. Now, for ranged weapons, there is something mega important you need to know. Initially, I thought ranged weapons didn't do anything for me. I had them equipped, but my luck stat didn't change, so I was a little confused. But it turns out you also have to have them selected from the item bar menu as well. So when I switched, my luck increased, so yeah, don't forget to do that. And like I said, weapon damage is local, so just put Chi Obtention instead, which is not local, so you can benefit from it and get like 37k Chi per monkey every 20 to 30 seconds, which is pretty good. And lastly, accessories, you want double bronze dice for the 36 luck. You can do my accessory reroll method if you want 5 star versions, but otherwise try to get a damage stat and Chi Obtention as the other stats, and that's about it for gear. For stats, pretty simple, pump water to 99. In total, I have 227 luck, and you can't put luck on weapons, so 230-ish is likely the min-max if you can get high natural stats on arms and head. Also get 30 fire virtue for our overpowered burst. And lastly, spells. The highest damage spell in the game that isn't conditional is Ominous Chill against the big guys. So you run in, you cast it, and monkey dies in 2-3 cast, and you want amplify damage and overpower burst to boost the ice damage. You can mega boost with a couple more spells, but it's not really worth the trouble and you need to be 150 to pull it off unless you sacrifice some ice. But there is something important regarding OB. When you run in, cast Ominous without hitting the monkey afterward. If you hit it with the hammer after casting Ominous, it shuts off your damage boost. So if you let it go, you get the full 600 or whatever hit, then after all those hits land, then you hit once with a jumping hammer attack and cast chill again for easy two-shotting the monkey. And for divine spirit, we're going to use the final boss dragon, Ying Long, because it has equipment drop rate. That's pretty much all we're using it for. And finally, the range weapon farm. This gives you guaranteed four stars and most, if not all, 
appear to get graces on them each time, thanks to my Discord broskies for the strat. But the mission is Centuries of Glory Burned Away in Chapter 4. You have to do this on New Game Plus, of course, but here is the route. So when you spawn in, jump down here. Then jump over here on this rubble. Jump up here, past the pot, into the fire. Luckily, we don't have Neo levels of fire. And just run through here and then make a left. You can get that flag if you want, but if you do this correctly, you won't need it. Just go over here, then turn right. Now there's another option that can go straight forward and all around, but I find it inconsistent. So just go through here, turn right here and up this ladder. You avoid the lightning from the dragon easily and just go on these rooftops here. Go across, go across, and then jump over here. And right there is the chest. You open it and you die. <laughs> You can use Mystic Cranes, but I find just what's the point? Just die unless you want to hold on to your XP. But once you're dead, you will spawn back at the camp and you just travel back to the same mission to do the mission again from the start so you can continue farming. And that's how you can get a ton of graces guaranteed. And while ranged weapons stats don't stack, only the primary one you have out has its stats in effect. That doesn't apply to set bonuses though. So with two graces on ranged weapons, that's two out of the five you need for your build already covered. And yeah, that is the luck farming strategy. Good luck getting five stars. Now, if you're looking for normal sets at five star rarity, like Lubu or Sao Sao, then you'd want to fight their actual boss missions since the monkey loot table is too wide to get a specific set you're looking for. And it also seems that chests are not affected by luck, but any four stars that do exist in a chest likely will have a grace on them. And there's a bunch of little side missions you can do to get that kind of stuff, but I just prefer the monkey since it gives you XP, it gives you money, and you still get four stars and graces often enough. And the chest, as far as I know, cannot drop five stars, which the monkey can. So if you find a video useful, give the video a like, share it, and comment down below any more strategies you guys have found to get good gear. I'm sure that'll help a lot of people out. And now that I have a farm strategy, I can focus on builds again. So if you don't want to miss them, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more Woshlong epicness.